We want to bring in Dr. Cassandra Albrich, president of the Michigan State Board of Education. Thank you for being with us on the Oakland County Megacast. Great to be with you. Thank you. I would imagine when you think you have a plan in place, some new information comes along and it has to change. How has that been for you and your organization? Well, you know, uh, it's really the local school districts that are, I think, bearing the brunt of all of the uh, the changes that are happening on a constant basis and a regular basis. Um, at the state level, we've been able to provide some um, some policies and procedures that they can follow, but really it's it's what's happening at the local level. What do your numbers look like? Uh, what, what are your parents' expectations? What can you reasonably do safely within the school? So there's a lot changing and it's all dependent on what happens with this pandemic. And as you know, there's, there's no, um, rhyme or reason sometimes to how things are, are ending up with the pandemic and therefore things have to change constantly with our schools. I worry about the kids that could be getting lost in the middle of all of this because sometimes they're not as, uh, you know, they're just young. They're not as okay. able to go with the flow of the changes each and every day. But so many of these kids rely on school. It's their safe place. It's where they get their food for the day. It's where they... Uh, you know, they learn. So how much of that concern do you have for the kids in the state of Michigan? That's a tremendous concern. I think everybody's worried about these, the, the kids that are not in the school on a regular basis every single day. There's no replacement really for face-to-face -face instruction, but you still have to do the best that you can do. Uh, and you have to do it in a way that is safe for everybody. So what a lot of our schools are doing is really um, trying to prioritize those kids who can't really uh, learn as well in a virtual environment. Um, and having some of them come back, whereas others that could learn in a virtual environment, like high school students, for example, um, would, would be able to do so. Uh, but it's a huge concern because at the end of the day, you're right. There's, it's not just about the learning that happens every day. It's about the social aspect that comes with it. Um, so for example, we are in the process right now. I just had a press secretary, a press conference with, um, Senator Stabenow this week because the USDA is, um, refusing to extend some flexibilities with food distribution. This is going to have a huge impact on what schools can do and how they can feed the kids within their school districts. So these are the types of things that it, we have to take into consideration as well. It's not just about the learning that happens every day, although that's immensely important. It's about all of the other aspects that come with schooling as well. Yeah, I think back in March when this first happened, there was a lot of support. People were coming together to try to figure out how to get through the next day and the next week. Food was a big issue, and we had teachers that were delivering food to their kids and making sure that they were eating and they were getting nutrition during this time. So as we go on, it seems politics is getting in the middle of that. Is it is it frustrating to try to navigate what's best for the kids and deal with the politics associated with all of this? It's absolutely frustrating because you don't just have, uh, the, you have the local level, you have the state level, and then you have the federal level. And there are different uh, responsibilities with each, and there's also different criteria that you have to follow. Um, when, the, this, when the pandemic first hit back in March, uh, we were able to get a lot of flexibilities out of the federal government. Um, the testing flexibility, for example, from the U.S. Department of Education. And like I said, the USDA was very flexible when it came to how we could feed students who were no longer coming to campus uh, every single day. Um, th some of those flexibilities are now coming to an end um, very arbitrarily, really, uh, simply because, uh, you know, the, the department that oversees them uh, has made a decision or um, they put an arbitrary deadline date in and are now refusing to extend some of those deadlines. So that's a, a definitely a, a, a bone of contention, I think, with a lot of us is just, you know, you have all of this happening right now. It's the fall. It should be a time when everyone's going back to school. And yet we're still trying to figure out all of these different ancillary uh, issues related to uh, public education. Dr. Cassandra Olbrick with us. She's the president of the Michigan State Board of Education with us on the Oakland County Megacast. And you talk about providing those extra resources 
for students, particularly students in need in school environments. A lot of that comes down to funding for our schools and with uncertainty in the state budget regarding what, per, what the per pupil cuts are going to be. A lot of that's mm -hmm. looking toward state aid and federal aid particularly from the CARES Act and recently there's a bit of controversy uh, in the in discrepancies between the interpretation of the CARES Act funding for schools on state level and from the secretary the US Department of Education secretary uh, Betsy DeVos your thoughts on her unique interpretation of the federal mm -hmm. CARES Act funding well I think the only discrepancy comes down to secretary DeVos's interpretation of very plain language in the CARES Act uh, everyone else seems to know what it says. So that is the reason that many states are now suing the U.S. Department of Education, Secretary DeVos specifically, because she tried to uh, essentially change the formula on how you fund uh, Title I schools in the state of Michigan. So just to give you a little bit of background, uh, the CARES Act provided about $390 million to the state of Michigan uh, for our local schools to help with additional costs related to the pandemic. And in the bill, it said that the funds, at least 90% of them should be distributed based on Title I federal funding formula. Uh, this has been around for a long time. We all know what that formula is. Schools know what to expect. And as part of that funding formula, when funds go to local districts, they have to do a set aside for uh, similar students, low income, needy students in their district who might attend private school. This has been around, they know that they have to do this, and it is not an issue. Uh, Secretary DeVos decided to change her interpretation of the funding formula and said that for the CARES Act, these schools would have to set aside funding for every student who attends private school within their district. And this would have resulted in millions of dollars being diverted from our local public schools into private schools um, based simply on the fact that she decided that this is how the funding formula should work. Congress, both sides, both uh, Democrats and Republicans said that was never their intent. Uh, and now a Washington judge, a, a federal judge in Washington has basically just put a, a hold on this. Um, there's a little uh, discussion on whether this just applies to the state of Washington or to the country as a whole. Uh, but the state of Michigan is part of the lawsuit against Secretary DeVos that has already gone through oral hearings. And we expect the same kind of decision for us as well. Um, at the end of the day, the judge in Washington state basically said that this was, um, uh, she was creating her own ambiguity within the language uh, that really didn't exist. So where do things stand now? If I'm a parent, I'm struggling with the decision of sending my kid back to the classroom, remote learning, getting them all the tools that they need to get them through this school year. What's your advice to those parents right now as the president of the State Board of Education? So my advice would be work with your local school board, work with your local superintendent and your educators in your area um, because they are working very hard to come up with uh, learning plans to make sure that students are still getting access to education uh, and but are doing it in a very safe manner. And as part of that, the legislature has uh, passed uh, a bill recently that was signed by the governor that waives some of the requirements at the state level um, so that that there is more flexibility in how schools can provide education. It doesn't all have to be face to face. Um, there's no mandate like that in the state of Michigan at this point. Uh, the number of days, the number of hours are being waived as long as the content is still being delivered that would be equivalent to the number of days and the number of hours. And the attendance percentage, uh, in the past, um, you had to have 75% attendance on a daily basis, otherwise your uh, school aid fund could be impacted by that. Uh, that is now extended so it's not necessarily a daily, but it requires uh, some kind of interaction on a regular basis, uh, weekly and both monthly. So there's a number of different flexibilities that have been written into the law to account for the pandemic, but it's still a local decision. And it's still something that you should be working with your local school boards, your local superintendent and the educators in your community um, to determine what is in the best interest of your child based on what is going to be safe. Dr. Cassandra Ulbrich with us. She is the president of the Michigan State Board of Education. A big concern for the school districts uh, at, the, at the highest levels has been 
they're budgeting for the for the for the upcoming school year and, and into the future. There's a lot of uncertainty as uh, the state legislatures continue to work on revenue estimations for their upcoming budget. What conversations are you having uh, between the school districts and the state board of education, and between your organization and the state legislature to bridge the to bridge those gaps and, and minimize any potential detrimental impact on our schools in this upcoming budget? It's a, a tremendous concern. We did get some good news this week when the revenue estimating conference was held and it, the results were that the, the budget is not as bad as anticipated, um, but still down in the school aid fund, uh, no doubt about that. And we still need to look at what are the long-term effects. So the budget for next fiscal year may not be as bad as we thought it was gonna be, but there's still gonna be some long-term effects of, of what's been happening. Um, so one of the things that we did, the State Board of Education, along with the state superintendent called on uh, the federal government, called on Congress, essentially to provide additional funding for states and for local school uh, districts um, to help weather the storm of what's gonna happen with the, the pandemic. Uh, you know, they, they have done a very good job of, of trying to protect businesses and, and uh, protect those who are um, finding themselves in unemployment, but there's a trickle down effect as well and it's going to hit our school districts and our local communities and um, we are we are asking congress to take that into consideration as well one of the things we get to do here on the oakland county megacast is speak with people at length we have had the opportunity to talk with various superintendents throughout the oakland county area almost every single one of them expressed frustration with the response from the state the lack of guidance as well as the delay in guidance. What's your response to that? And what's being done if this pandemic goes beyond this first semester and into 2021? So I can imagine that there probably is a lot of frustration from the state level. Um, one of the things that we, we saw was um, we really needed uh, the state legislature to step up and to provide some flexibility, as I said, with uh, hours, days, uh, enrollment, et cetera. Uh, and, and it took a while for that to happen. In fact, it just happened a few weeks ago. It should have happened a few months ago. And so that's part of the issue. I mean, we certainly understand that as well. And I'm sure there's also questions that uh, are sent to the Department of Education that may not uh, get resolved uh, as quickly as people would like. Completely understandable. Uh, however, I think we all have to remember that we are in very unprecedented times and um, nobody expected anything like this to happen. But we have spent the summer basically working to try to make sure that come fall, we are ready for um, the school year, even in a time when we know that there's so many questions that we'll, we can't possibly answer and nobody can at this point. Um, and I apologize, I, I didn't can you repeat the second part of your question? So you're prepared for the fall, you've addressed the fall. What, what is being done to address the issue if we go into 2021? Because they are saying this pandemic could last uh, into next year as well. That's a great question. And I don't think that anyone quite knows the answer to that at this point. Um, right now what the legislature has done is created a bill that basically says every 30 days, the uh, local school board has to come back and reevaluate their return to learn plans and then uh, put them out for public comment as well. So essentially what this means is on a monthly basis, uh, the community will have an opportunity to weigh in on the direction that the school is headed, um, but it also provides the, the local district the opportunity to reevaluate every 30 days. I will say though, however, to please keep in mind that that is um, that is a lot of work to do on every single month, uh, and um, so we're, we're you know please give your local districts a little bit of leeway as they're trying to work their way through this. But the reality is none of us know what's going to happen with this pandemic. Um, it, it's unfortunate we're in the position we are, and you know on a personal level i think that there are things that could have been done um before that would have alleviated where we are right now they weren't done so now we have to pick up the pieces and try to move forward 
Dr. Cassandra Olbrick, she is the president of the Michigan State Board of Education. Uh, Dr. Olbrick, just a couple more minutes with you before we let you go. Is there anything else that you'd like to touch on today that we haven't spoken about or any other information that would be helpful for our students, our parents, our school districts to know? Um, so I would just, uh, again, reiterate the fact that a lot of people are putting a lot of effort into um, doing the best they can to make sure that kids still have access to the resources that they need and the education that they need um, moving forward. Please communicate with your local school boards, communicate with your local superintendents, um, and, uh, you know, but also have, have a little bit of, of understanding that everyone's trying to figure this out together. We're in very unprecedented times. And, um, you know, and I also want to say that I think our educators are really doing the best job that they can with what they, they have been presented with. Um, and so I, I just kudos to everybody who's, who's really putting in the effort to try to make this the best experience possible. Um, but again, it, it's, it's sad that we're in this situation and it's particularly sad for our kids. Do you think there's been anything positive that's come out of this that may be better going forward that, that you and the Board of Education could take forward? Well, I think one of, I, I don't know that I would say there's a whole lot of positives that have come out of a situation like this. Um, but one of the things that I, I think has been very gratifying is just the recognition of how important public education really is and everything that it provides uh, for our families, for our communities, for our kids. And I think that was, um, that was a recognition that was waning at some point. And I think people are starting to realize once again, this really is an important thing for us to invest in and to support. Dr. Cassandra Albright, president of the Michigan State Board of Education, we appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to uh, speak with us here on the Oakland County Megacast. Thank you so much. Stay safe, stay healthy, and thank you for all that you and your team does for the kids in the state of Michigan. Thank you. I appreciate uh, everything you guys are doing.